Hey guys, it's Sam. Today we're going to be talking about a Japanese plot structure called Kisho Tenkets, which is different from the three act structure that we're familiar with in the West. I happen to think that this plot structure is super powerful in storytelling, and I'm personally using it for my own story. So today we're going to talk about the surprising power of Kisho Tenkets while I ink chapter three from my manga Ye Old Treehouse. You can check it out in the description down below. It's available on Global Comics. So what is Kisho Tenkets? It's a four act narrative structure and it's come from East Asian storytelling, particularly in Japan. So unlike the Western narrative structures that we're all used to that focus on conflict and antagonists and resolution, Kisho Tenkets focuses on development and the transformation of a situation or an idea. So it basically gives you a full picture of the world and the characters and what's happening. And it focuses on transforming those things after it's been presented to you. So it's a method of storytelling that doesn't rely solely on confrontation or opposition to drive the plot forward, which can feel a little weird to folks who may not be used to this kind of storytelling structure. So there's four parts of Kisho Tenketsu. First is key. So key is the introduction. This is where your story starts. As author, this is where you introduce your main characters, you set your scene, and you establish the initial situation. It's similar to the exposition that you might be used to in Western storytelling, but it doesn't necessarily prepare you or set up a conflict. Instead, it actually presents kind of like a slice of life snapshot of the world that you're about to explore. So this is where the power of Kisho Tenketsu begins. In a lot of Western storytelling, you're initially exposed to an, a problem, an antagonist, a conflict, and you're basically made to feel or set up to feel that the heroes are going to overcome and achieve this conflict or power by the end of the story. But with Kisho Tenkets, it's just giving you a piece of that world and who's in it and setting that up. The next part is show. This is the development phase. So in key, we give the initial situation and kind of set up the world and the characters. But with show, we learn more about them. So this is the character development stage. We learn about their relationships. We learn about their inner turmoils. We learn about where they live. Basically, the show section just kind of gets a little bit deeper into the establishment phase of key. Again, there's like no conflict escalation here, but it's about enriching the narrative landscape. Really gets you deep into the world and deep into the characters, which I think is part of the power because you build an attachment as an audience to this world and to these characters so that whatever comes next, you're really invested because you're already attached to these characters. And this is where Keisha then gets hits you with 10, which is the twist. This is the big bomb. It's the most crucial and distinctive part of Kisho Tenkets. So 10 is twist. It introduces some kind of unexpected element, like something you did not see coming, a surprising development or some kind of new perspective to the world that was previously established. So the twist is not necessarily a conflict in the traditional sense. So you're not going to see like an antagonist just like pop out of nowhere suddenly, but it's rather some sort of element that changes changes how we view the narrative that was already established. And it could be super dramatic or it could be really subtle, but it basically takes everything you knew from what was established and turns it on its head. This is the key point of Kisho Tenkets, the plot twist. So I personally love this. I think this is the part that is a little bit uh, whiplashy for folks who are more used to the Western narrative structure because everything that was just set up, set up is completely tossed on its head. But I think this is what makes for a really riveting story when you're using this act structure. And lastly, Ketz is the final act that brings everything together. It shows how the twist from the 10 phase relates to our changes in understanding of the introduction and how it was established. Kets doesn't necessarily resolve a conflict, but it demonstrates how the seemingly unrelated elements of the introduction and the twist come together to form like a cohesive whole. So basically it puts these two parts together and leaves you as an audience member with a completely new understanding and perspective. So now that we kind of broken down down what Kisho Tenkets is and kind of touched a little bit on what I think is the power of Kisho Tenkets. Let's go a little bit deeper and talk about how it contrasts with the Western three act structure and how it really shines from the Western three act structure. So the three act structure is basically the introduction, the climax and the end. And usually in Western stories, you're introduced to 
the major problem, the major villain, the major antagonist at the very beginning. So your mind kind of sets up that the heroes are going to go on some adventure, some journey to resolve this big conflict. But with Kishoten Kets, it doesn't have to involve involve conflict at all and many times it doesn't involve a direct conflict between two characters but it focuses on revealing and change so what i think is really powerful about this is it allows for stories that focus on ideas more than actual action or confrontation which helps you make things that are more contemplative you can kind of think more about the meanings of things or explore emotions between your characters as opposed to focusing so heavily on fighting and action you can kind of explore how you know those internal mechanisms can affect your characters as well in manga a lot of slice of life work frequently employs Kisho Tenkets to create like an engaging story without dramatic conflicts because as you know slice of life is basically like daily life stories so you know you're not going to see like a Thanos <laughs> in a slice of life but you still need to have you know those sorts of um, engaging aspects without necessarily having that direct confrontation. So I personally am using Kisho Tenkets in my story and let me tell you a little bit about how I am using it right now. So with Kishoten Kets, I've set up a world in the introduction of my story. I've established some locations, some characters, some jobs that they have. And what I'm doing right now is sort of cooking out that introduction, letting you see a little bit more of their personalities, some of their pitfalls, their motivations, and giving you a little bit of a taste of really what's going on in the character's head. Now, there is going to be a part in my story that completely left turns from what you're initially exposed to as the big problem. And like I said, even though a lot of folks may think that this is kind of a whiplashy part, what I think this does is kind of show you how you can communicate like complex story ideas without necessarily relying on a big bad, so to speak. And I think that that really helps you make characters that are a lot more interesting. Like for example, if the antagonist is not an individual per se, but it's an idea or, you know, sort of like a non-tangible enemy, you know, an ideology, for example, it lets you make something that's a lot more complex and it can be a lot more interesting. There's a lot more to analyze with that. There's a lot more to think about. Um, and it could leave a bigger impact on an audience as well. Another thing that I think is super powerful about Kisho Tenketsu is it really allows you to create a character driven story. So rather than a conflict driven story where everything just leads up to the resolution of that conflict, the characters kind of drive what happens and the twists and turns that happen in the story because, you know, they're con they're, the conflict is something potentially internal or environmental or not exactly, you know, like a big bad. So the characters' decisions and how they react to things and how they deal and handle with their emotions is what drives that story forward. What are some of the things that I think are a bit challenging about Kisho Tenkets, as I'm using this in my own work too, and maybe what some people may find difficult about it, is that uh, Western audiences sometimes find it to be unsatisfying in the sense that the, the conflict is not super clear. So you're not initially introduced to big stakes and big fights out the get-go. So some people might find this a little unsatisfying. And you do have to kind of contend with the fact that, you know, there the payoff comes down down you know, a little bit further down the road than it would if you use a typical three act structure. And what you need to do as a result of this is ensure that the characters that you have are really strong because they're going to be the initial thing that's keeping a person involved with your story and audience reading your story. So there is a little bit of work that you have to do to ensure that, you know, your, your characters who are driving the force of the narrative are strong enough to keep people interested because you don't really have a clear major conflict. Also, so there's a huge difference between the 10, the twist in Kishoten Kets and plot twist in Western stories. And let me break that down a little bit. So in a Western story, a plot twist, you may have an idea about what something is, who something is, or what something means. And usually you can just drop the plot twist and say, well, nope, that thing that you thought is not actually what it is, you know? And because of the way the three act structure works, it's not 
disorienting when you do that, you know, because you have a very linear, you're telling a very linear sort of story in that case. But with Kishoten Kets, when you drop this twist, it can change the entire dynamic of the story. Like initially you may think, oh, you know, I have uh, a school and students are learning magic in this school and they're learning magic because, you know, magic is used in this world to protect people or whatever. And then the twist in the story could be, Oh, but magic is actually bad. And there was some dark society that was teaching these students magic so that they can take over the world. So the reason you got to be careful with that is because if someone jumps into the story because they like magic and they want to see the heroes fight a bad guy using their cool magic abilities, you've just told them now that magic is bad and antagonistic and now the heroes will no longer be using it. So this completely changes the framework of the story and the audience may not necessarily be expecting that. So you have to be really careful with how you handle the twist in Kishoten Kets. It has to kind of build up in a way that honors the world that you established while still, you know, adding that, oh my God, things are like completely and totally different now. But I think that's what makes this narrative structure super fun. And I prefer it to the Western three act structure for that reason. Now, I highly suggest that you experiment with Kisho Tenkets to see how you can build up a world and then, you know, flip it on its head in a really nuanced way or practice writing stories where there isn't a clear cut antagonist at first because it really forces you to try some different literary techniques and try some different things about how you get conflict across in your story. And I think it also helps you just build out really, really, really strong characters because in the beginning of this type of story everything really falls on your characters and how you've sort of developed them so i hope you found this video informative and interesting and maybe even consider using kishoten kets in your own writing or see if you recognize it in other works that you enjoy and thanks so much for watching if you're interested in reading my fantasy manga yield treehouse it's available on global comics the link is in the description down below if you like black clover or one piece or you just are craving a fantasy manga i think you will really enjoy it so give it a read and until until next time, bye. If you've stuck around to the end, I'm going to give you a little bonus synopsis of Ye Old Treehouse. So my story Ye Old Treehouse takes place in a country called Glory Peak. An organization named Viviform has a group of agents with special superpowers and their job is to defend the country. There is a crazy ringmaster named Drindith Nosferi that wants to take over the country and their first mission is to stop him from doing that. Each agent has something called an auger, which is a special ability that they they use to fight and there's also something very Kicho Ten Kets about the auger abilities which will reveal itself down the plot as the story goes. So like I said it's available chapter one and two are available on global comics right now and chapter three is going to be released this Friday. I'd really love if you take a look at it because I think we need more fantasy stories. I don't know why there aren't a lot of fantasy stories right now. It seems like everyone's doing exorcist manga or something adjacent to that. But you know, I love a good fantasy story. So anyway, that was my little yield bonus. And thank you so much for sticking around this long. Like I really appreciate your support so much. And I hope you check for the next video. Bye.